So Sister Sunshine is at it again. She's once again making videos about the occult and neo-paganism when she obviously doesn't know what she's talking about. Um, I think it's been two years now, or at least almost two years, that I made a video response to her last occult video, in which she told me she would make a video response and then never did. So here I am again to refute um, Sister Sunshine. I did it once before. She had no response. And so we'll see. I'm, I'm very curious to see if she'll have a response this time. Hi, Sister Sunshine here. Welcome back to my video blog. And in keeping with my decision to do a few videos about the uh, occult and its impact on people in an effort to educate uh, Christians. I'm also here in an effort to educate um, and to warn people about people like you who spread misinformation and don't understand things. And I did this once before, and you claimed that you were going to make a video response to me, and never did. Um, in an effort to prepare them for spiritual warfare, or just to warn them so that they understand what they're dealing with, um, especially with the popularity of um, various television shows, radio shows, games, video games, um, etc., dealing with the occult. It just, it's on the rise right now. Now, we might have more types of media available to us now, but the occult and witchcraft and paganism have always been available in the media. Even in um, medieval times and Renaissance times, they were available in the media, and of course before that. And, you know, just look at Shakespeare. You know, there's several examples right there. I think the big difference now with the media now compared to the media back then is that media now has more truthful information instead of propagandized information that's controlled by the Christian church. Because the information now isn't propagandized and controlled by the Christian church, you see people leaving Christianity in droves for these alternative religions and paths. And then we have people like you who try to make up for it by propagandizing against those religions like the, like the Christian church did in the beginning. Um, now, the scriptures do teach that uh, spiritual forces, demonic forces, are bound uh, inside the physical earth. Uh, in Revelations 9 and 14, it's written, The four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Um, I know they found soft-shell turtles in the Euphrates River, but I, I'm curious to see if there's any proof of there being any angels in the river. Just, just curious. If you look in Job 26 and 5, it reads, dead things are formed from under the waters. Dead things are formed from under the waters. Hmm. Scientifically speaking, that's obviously not true. Now, if you, if you look at the Hebrew translation, it reads, the Rapha, fallen angels, are made to writhe from beneath the waters. Even with the Hebrew translation that you talk about, I still don't quite get it because... As far as I know, we've found no angels under the water. And secondly, you said they are bound in the earth. Um, that's different than being in the water. Some places uh, on the earth are uh, basically like a holding area um, where God has bound certain fallen entities. Well, that seems kind of silly, doesn't it? I mean, if he's really caring about people and not wanting them to mess with these entities, why would he put them there for people to mess with? It just makes no sense, especially considering that God's supposed to know everything, so he's going to know what's going to happen with those entities anyways. Obviously, he either wants people to mess with them, or it's a complete load of shit. I'm going for option two. You can see references to this in Second Peter 2 and 4 and Jude uh, 6. Now, scripture reveals that uh, fallen spirits seek to communicate with men and also to participate in the affairs of men. I find all this completely ironic because the people who wrote the Bible were obviously writing negatively about paganism um, because they wanted to. But at the same time, they were taking parts of paganism and inserting it into the Bible. These, these evil spirits that you're talking about or fallen angels being locked into the earth sounds remarkably like the Greek Tartarus. I encourage you to look that up. But seriously, there is no proof that my gods or any other pagan gods are demons, and there never will be. In fact, the term demon doesn't even really mean what you think it means. The term demon simply just means spirit. It didn't connotate any good or evil, you know, it just meant spirit. But, you know, most people today think of it in the Christian context because the Christians took it out of context. Seriously. <laughs> There's no proof. 
The Hebrew people were warned that earth spirits pretending to be gods might seek to have communion with men. Of course they were warned. The people who were controlling them wanted them to be monotheists and follow the god that they wanted them to follow. But it still means that there's no proof. In 1 Samuel 28 and 13, we read the story about the witch of Endor. Now, she summoned uh, fallen spirits. And in the particular story about the witch of Endor, we see that, that the, a fallen spirit ascended from out of the earth. Uh, these, this story and other scriptures reveal that uh, there's a dynamic energy behind the earth goddess spirits. Um, both of Halloween and of Wicca, of witchcraft, of um, this earth magic, nature magic, um, all of these type of things that we see, New Ageism, etc. And it's real. It's the same power that is behind the legions of the fallen spirits, the Rafa, that are bound within the earth. And this is exactly why you should not talk about witchcraft, because you obviously don't know what you're talking about. Witchcraft, magic, things like that, you don't know what you're talking about. You assume that we have to call on spirits to do these things, but we don't. Someone can be an atheist and still practice magic. You don't have to call on any spirits, any gods, anything. The power comes from within. <laughs> um, and, and so, therefore... You, the, the whole premise that somehow Wicca and witchcraft are ultimately connected to this other spirit that you're talking about is ridiculous. There's no proof of that. In fact, it makes you sound like a raving lunatic. In fact, the magical energy that witches use, you use as well. Everybody uses it. Everybody creates change within their own universe using their own intentful energy. You do it, I do it, I just simply know how to do it better. Further, you claim that the earth goddess is somehow connected to these evil spirits. But the thing that you don't understand is that, according to Jesus in the Bible, Satan cannot divide his house, and therefore he cannot cast out Satan. And therefore, that means that if someone were to produce um, some sort of exorcism or healing um, on behalf of a goddess, then that obviously that goddess couldn't come from Satan because Satan can't divide his own house. And that's your own Bible. That's your God talking. Further, not all gods are gods of the earth. You know, there's several different types of gods. Uh, there's Chthonic gods, which are gods of the earth. There's primordial gods, which may be gods of the earth, but aren't always gods of the earth. In my religion, there's Olympian gods, there's titans, there's giants. There's several different types of gods, and only a few of them are gods of the earth. So what's your excuse for the rest of them? I mean, it, it, it's, you just can't explain all of that. You can't. Now... Today, just as in antiquity, as in times past, um, those who are practicing modern paganism are deceived into worshiping these spirits. You know, the funny thing is, is that you, you talk about people being deceived, but I, I just have, it comes back to, you know, how you came to your religion. And uh, Christianity, by, by and large, was spread by force. And it's still spread by proselytization, deception, propaganda against other religions. Paganism, on the other hand, has largely been spread by personal revelation and logic and study. So it just makes me wonder, I mean, it just seems pretty obvious to me who's deceived and it's not the pagans. Thus, the pagan images that were represented as the ancient gods and goddesses, so when you see these ancient statues, paintings, drawings, representations um, of ancient gods and goddesses, these were Elohim. They were empty. They were nothing. They were vanity. But behind these empty idols were the living dynamics of idolatry itself. And the objects of this heathen adoration were demons and Satan, Lucifer himself. Once again, that's where you're wrong. You see, you're talking about things that you purely don't understand. If you go back to this driving statement that Jesus said about Satan not being able to divide his own house, what you don't understand is the word Apollo. The word Apollo means to drive away, and Apollo uh, is a god and was a god back then um, that was used um, in the matter of exorcisms, driving out negative spirits. So, once again, Satan can't cast out Satan. 
if Satan is the evil spirits, then obviously if you're calling on the name of a god to cast out evil spirits, that god can't be related to Satan. And therefore, you know, especially in the case of Apollo and other gods that drive out demons, they can't be related to Satan. They can't be. Now, because the Bible defines this earth-centered goddess worship as actually paying homage to Satan and to his demons. You keep talking about goddess-centered, earth-based religion. The thing is, when you talk about the ancient pagan religions, very few of them were goddess-centered. Uh, most pagan religions were actually have had male deities as their um, chief deities. They were not feminist religions. That's all kind of a new thing. But the thing is, is that there's a big anti-feminist theme in the Bible. Um, it's one of the reasons why I think, you know, any woman who really respects themselves can't really take the Bible seriously. But, you know, you you sit here quoting Paul. I, I just, I've got to know, do you speak in church? Because if you do, then you're not really listening to what Paul is saying. Because he basically said that women should not be heard in church. Uh, women, um, what they have to say doesn't matter. And that, you know, they need to ask their husbands to even be educated. So I want to know, do you speak in church? And did you ask your husband permission before you learned all this and made this video? And since demons are eternal personalities and they desire the worship of humans because they want to be as God, it's clear that Wiccan deities, pagan deities, um, these false idols, these false gods, all of these things from antiquity and these things that are being worshipped in modern times today in various guises under various names uh, are in reality nothing more than neo-pagan titles given to demonic spirits. Oh, it's also clear to me now, religions that profess peace and, and ask people to harm none are the bad, evil religions when the religion that produces sexual misery and uh, anti-feminist rhetoric and tells women that they need to be keepers of the home and it needs to be spread by the sword and has uh, promoted evil things like slavery and, uh, you know, justified killing and just war and things like that. That's the good religion. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. You know, the, the peaceful religion, they're the evil people. The, the warlike, anti-feminist religion, that's the good religion. Let's be real. So, it's something to think about. For the Christian, we need to take another look at both things in the past and the things of the present. Because many times, things that are being worshipped today, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. It's the same pagan spirits. It's the same story. It may be recycled. It may be repackaged. It may be reconstituted, but it's the same spirit. It's the same being, Satan, or his imps, his demons. Well, once again, I've, I've given you evidence for that statement. You know, the things that I'd like to leave you with is if our gods are in fact the devils and the demons that you're talking about, how can they do the good things that they do, if, especially considering that your Jesus disagrees with you on that? Now, um, you know, I'm going to give you an example, you know, because you're, you might say that nothing like that ever happened. Um, last year, almost a year ago, my son's 11 months now, um, my, fiance, I, uh, my fiance and I had uh, a little boy named Griffin, and he was born at 24 weeks. They were t he, We were told that... Um, his chances of surviving were less than 50%, and that if he survived, he would most likely have some form of uh, neurological damage that would impair his learning abilities, basically that he would be mentally challenged. I, um, of course, was very, very upset about this. Um, he is my only son, and, um, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that he was going to be okay. And so we prayed every night to um, our gods, the Greek gods, to protect our son. We, pray, pray, we prayed to Artemis, we prayed to Apollo, we prayed to Athena, we prayed to Hera, we prayed to all these different gods to protect our son. And he beat the odds. He um, he's, uh, survived the NICU just fine. He gained weight and he started off at one pound, five ounces, and he's now nearly 20 pounds. 
and um, he ha also has no signs of neurological damage whatsoever. So um, we consider him to be quite the miracle. And so how can the gods protect my son and heal my son if they are in fact Satan? How, how or why would Satan do that? And, um, you know, just to convince one person, that doesn't seem right, you know, because he'd be going against his own works at that point. I I'm just curious to see what you'd have to say about that. If you're going to respond at all. <laughs> um, I'm still waiting for the first video response two years old.